Hello and welcome to episode 20, yay, 20 of Country Bumpkin Creates podcast. My name is Lucy, I'll be your host today. I'm coming to you from a rather sort of dark, dismal, grey, manky, dark more day. So I apologise if the lighting is pants and it looks on the screen that the quality isn't very good and I'm wondering if that's just because the light's so poor. I've tried putting lights on, turning lights off, opening curtains, closing curtains, you name it, I've done it and it still isn't getting much better. It's just unfortunately a typical winter's day here so there's not a lot I can do and if I don't, if I wait till the light's right then I'll be podcasting next spring so I'll just have to put up with it I'm afraid. Do apologise if it is a bit pants. Anyway, enough of poor video quality. Um, as I said, my name is Lucy. You can find me on Ravelry as Country Bumps, and you can find me on Instagram as Country underscore Bumps. We do have a podcast group on um, Ravelry. Uh, the link is in the down bar below, which will take you through to the podcast group, which will have where which will have which will have that's proper that is which will have where you will find <laughs> show notes for this episode that was a bit of dem then um where have i been what have i done since the last podcast did i go to your was i at yarndale before or after the last one i can't remember anyway so yarndale was amazing something happened after oh strictly yeah because i've told you about strictly so i have podcast since yarndale um went to stitch fest southwest in totnes for a few hours it was that horrible weekend where it was really stormy and horrible there was trying to get to totnes was a nightmare it was quite flooded in places um but i went for a few hours and it was lovely and um got to meet up with some friends which was even nicer so hi ladies um yeah so all was cool uh last weekend was amazing i was lucky enough to be able to attend the one retreat um in telford hosted by the lovely kelly nick and meg who are lay family yarns um nigel paid for me to go as um an early christmas present um and it was it was fab it was just what i needed i had a bit of a pants week the week before you know hormones pmt all that jazz um and a couple of things that reminded me of dad so that you know just didn't help either um and it was just what i needed sophie and i went hi Soph. um sophie and i went um we drove up on the friday um i had a relatively easy journey actually Com the weather wasn't very good so we took it easy um we drove to telford to our, we stayed in a premier inn just outside just in the center of telford um so we went and checked on in there and then we went and had some dinner and then we were meeting at a pub near um, the Moore's Craft Centre where Kelly and Nick and Meg have their shop. Um, so we met some of the other retreat attendees uh, there. Um, so we just had like a little impromptu knit night. Um, you might have seen, I did put some stuff on Instagram stories so you may have seen that. So we met on the Friday night. Um, Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast and uh, Knitting Expat Designs was there. Julie of Suffolk Socks, uh, Gaynor of Tales of Cuckoo Land. Um, they were the ones that you you may have come across. There were there were thirteen of us in total, and it was just everyone was just so lovely. I've come back making lots of new friends um so that was the friday evening we met and just had a uh had a sort of impromptu knit night in the pub um the saturday we were then at the moorscroft center all day um 
we were split into three groups um, and then we went off and we dyed some yarn. Oh, pants. I'll go and grab the yarn. Hang on two seconds. Let me un... You know when you think you've got everything organised? No, I wasn't. So, um, one of Kelly's uh, friends, whose name eludes me at this time, I'm really sorry, had written a pattern for a cowl that used um, fingering weight yarn and floof. Um, so we dyed up a skein of um, merino nylon fingering weight and then a skein of Surrey alpaca which is just I love Surrey alpaca I'm not a mohair fan because I find it too fly away and it ends up in your eyeballs and your lips and you end up eating more than you I, I'm not I'm just not a mohair person um, and I find it a little bit itchy so um, so Kelly's husband Nick was there to guide us as well as Kelly um, and Nick sort of produced a, would had a, a skein and we were like oh can we see what this colour looks like we, so Nick was like doing like a, a test skein of all the different colours um, and then we chose our colours um, and off we went are you ready for this it is full on epic da 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 it's blowing out a bit because yes it is bright pink the color i used was wild raspberry for this um so it is a, a tad darker than it is showing on screen but it is how mental is that and then this was my merino nylon skein uh so it's predominantly different pinks, light pink, dark pink, a little bit of the wild raspberry, some speckles. So you can see speckly goodness there, which was like a neon pink uh, that I used. Um, I put some blue on it as well, some like purpley blue. Uh, you can see those speckles are better there. Um, I love it. Couldn't have turned out any better if I tried, and I did try. So that was Saturday. Um, so while we were luckily in the first group, so um, while the other groups were going, um, what did they do two groups in the morning and then one in the afternoon? Um, we had the most amazing lunch. Um. then we the uh, where kelly's and nick's shop is it's literally not far from iron bridge um so um it's like a it's called the malls maws craft center and it's got lots of like little independent craft places um so we had a little wander around there and then we just sat and knit and nattered more nattered than knitted i think um but it was just really nice and then the sunday we oh saturday night we went back to the pub again for and we had our evening meal and then saturday sunday sunday yeah we met again at the at the craft center um just had a sort of like chilled out morning um kelly then gave us our goodie bags with our yarn in it once and when the yarn was dry um did a little raffle um i won two tickets to go to the full the wool full the wool monty show in sheffield next june and it's just before our wedding anniversary so i've talked nicely to the husband and we're going to go um we're going to go and attend that and then um have like a little holiday around the peak district um around that area so yeah so that was fun and then we had a lovely lunch and then we had to come home that wasn't so nice well it was nice to come home but 
I could have stayed. I could have done. I could have stayed another day, and with my ladies, it was just lovely. It was so lovely, and I came home, and my heart was just full. I was just so. It was just such a lovely, relaxing weekend, filled with lots of fun, laughter, good food, lots of good food. Um, yeah just it was just it was just lovely so thank you kelly and nick and meg and all the other ladies who are there um i know some of you may be watching hope some of you hello ladies um and I, it was just I, I it's so difficult to put into words but if you do get a chance to go i know kelly's doing more next year and i would like to go again if you do if you do get a chance to go then then please you know save up your pennies and go because it is totally worth it it was just such a fabulous lovely weekend and you come home with yarn you come home with more yarn because you buy more yarn in kelly's fabulous shop so this isn't the only yarn that came home with me believe me but as i knit it i will tell you where i got it and when and etc um yes yeah, so what's the scores on the doors oh this weekend is the last flock of this year uh flock is put on by uh the lovely mr b's yarn and bird street his wife claire lovely claire so john and claire and the and claire's sister bex um puts it on so we will be meeting uh you meet we it's at french a village hall in bristol and it's saturday afternoon i think it's one thirty till five thirty ish something like that can't remember anyway if you're interested if you contact claire at bird street uk on instagram she will give you all the information if you're in the bristol area or within traveling distance like we are it's well worth a trip so it is good fun it is good fun so i will be there on saturday is that it that's it then for this year because it's, I, how how have we got to the first of december already on sunday oh i should say what day it is shouldn't i it is thursday the 28th 28th of november i haven't got my fitbit on this is charging um thursday the 28th of november so happy thanksgiving if you're in the u.s um if you celebrate thanksgiving i'm sure most of you do i think you have you celebrate thanksgiving more than you do christmas i i believe i don't know i'm not american nope. so have a happy thanksgiving uh if it's not a holiday that you particularly enjoy due to whatever reason then i hope you get through it okay uh anyway we're for knitting are we are we doing for some knitting i've got a few fo's one of which you will have noticed is on my body I oh, love it. It's my new favourite. Every time I put it on now, Nigel's like, oh, you got your favourite sweater on. Well, like, yeah, because I spent months knitting it, so I'm going to wear it at every available opportunity. Am I not? So, I am wearing my finished Zweig sweater. Zweig is by Caitlin Hunter, who is Boyland Knitworks. And the yarns are this gorgeousness here is November. And then this, the my tonal colour Couture's boob shot is raspberry by Nora. Jo <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I just saw a little face appear at the window, and it was my husband checking if I was recording or not. So he's coming. There is a. There will be a bit of background noise now because he's just come in and he's going to make me a cup of tea because he's lovely, um, and stuff like that. Anyway, back to Couture's boob shot. So yes, this is raspberry colourway, and this is November, both by Nora George Yarns. Um so this is the body there's supposed to be like a 
crossover little crossover cable all the way down the body and the arms but I didn't do that and I didn't do I was, was talking about in my last one about doing more color work etc down here and then I just thought nah because it's going to detract from this and it's going to draw attention to my fat belly and my fat ass so no that ain't happening people can see that without the need for so um yeah it comes down it does cover my bum so it comes down the only thing that i thought was a bit odd was on the neck and the bottom rib here you do a one by one rib and then on the cuff you do a two by two rib and it wasn't until I'd already done one cuff that I thought that I realised that I'd done a one by one it tells you in the pattern to do a one by one on the neck and the so I just thought it was a bit odd but I wasn't going to unpick it because I'd already unpicked it all once because I can't read instructions and my cuff was about that wide because I didn't decrease and I didn't change down a needle size because eyeballs weren't working properly were they so I'd already had to unpick a sleeve and so and then I I'd add I had more stitches because I always pick up I had more stitches so I had to do more decrease rounds so but I got there in the end and I got it finished and I bloody love it so yeah I am wearing it at every opportunity thank you Nigel because I bloody deserved it so that is the first F. Oh, I've got quite a pile of FOs today. So I finished my full moon socks. So this is the full, they're just a vanilla sock. I had 50 grams, so I knit a tube uh, with a cuff at one end and a toe at the other. I then chopped it in half, knit a cuff and a toe, and then put some heels in. So I did them as like afterthought, everything sucks. So this is the Full Moon colourway by Fab Funky Fibres. And then I used this contrast is Chiffon uh, from Mr B's Yarn. And I think it works quite well. So they're ready to go in my socks box or baskets. I've got a couple of baskets that I keep my hand knit socks in. Because I have a little furry friend who ram raid drawers so they have to be kept in a basket up out of the way or else she would open the drawer and then when she opens the drawer she uses her claws to hoof out all the clothes that are in there so i don't want her doing that to my socks so they go in baskets and they are put up out of the way where she can't get them so yeah so they are my full moon socks so they're ready to go in uh what's next what's next on the list oh this is the starflake mystery knit that stephen west has just done uh and for once i managed to keep up and i got it done within the time so here it is in all its gloriousness it's curling a bit on the end because some of my stitch counts were a bit out but i don't care so the colors i used were uh the yarn i used was um damson which is this purple and slow which is like this gray mauvey color um, and they are by olan i got them at perth festival of yarn um so you start with this like starry snowflake thing hence the star flake oh here comes my cup of tea and then i did then you do these garter and stockinette ridges thanks do you want to come and say hello yeah. <laughs> and then i i chose there was an option to do brioche two color brioche or garter rose and i did brioche oh it's a bit of a like, drop stitch there but once it's on the body you're not going to notice and then you do then you did these like um these bumps so you, you went along and you did these bumps and then some eyelet rows above them and then some garter and then a two colour it's the first time I've done two colour eye cord bind off it's a bit of a faff but it looks nice um, 
yeah so I'm pleased about that it's come out quite large some of them that I've seen on an Instagram are a bit larger but I think it's large enough I didn't aggressively block it I just laid it out sorry he's now getting some pants off the dryer that's there because he's going he's going out we've been I'd, um I know a lot of you know but we we live on a holiday park Nigel and his brother and sister run the park his mum and dad bought it in 85 and now his brother him and his sister run it um and we've been shortlisted for the final of the camping and caravan park of the year in the devon tourism awards so he's off he's going to be getting in the shower now because he's going to that tonight it's a black tie event i unfortunately i can't go because so we're we're in the final three so we're guaranteed at least a bronze uh we're hoping for a bit higher but so that's lovely that's a bit of fun um so unfortunately i'm teaching at my wi tonight and it's a long-standing commitment so um and we only found out about these awards about three weeks ago so um i can't go unfortunately so he's off to that tonight so he's just getting starting to get ready so you may hear the shower going because the bathroom's just across the hallway from where i'm recording anyway so as an aside let's get back to the knitting so here we are so i do apologize if you if there's any background noise but it shouldn't be too much so here we are with our finished and then you do on the edge there was these like stripy sections um, and more eyelets on the final on the like wedges end wedges so it's oh, lush love it i love it i love it i love it i love it uh right what's next finished but not finished because i haven't woven in the ends or blocked it is my jig shawl also by stephen west uh where's the top there we go so this is the jig shawl and i used lots of different yarns in this let's say i'm woven in any ends uh with a lovely eye cord border so you start here this section and then work out so that's the middle and then you go down into this pointy bit and then out to this pointy bit so and this every now and again you've got these bits here um and they are a merino nylon and you hold like a, a fluff with it so i used a suri alpaca like a really pale pink suri alpaca um so there's spots in it where which are quite luxurious so there we go that's that finished like i say i'm wearing in any ends it got finished we had nigel's um children well i say children the grown-up children uh they came down for a week um excuse me i'm gonna wet my whistle um they came down at the end of October for a week and I finished it then and I just put it aside. Um, yeah, and it just, then it got forgotten about. Uh, oh, this. When I was at the Stitch Fest in Totnes, I had watched the Grocery Girls the day before we let, went and I saw Jodie's um, Snuggle is Real cowl and this is by... Uh, a very handsome gentleman called Maxim Sierker C Y R. It's, anyway, it'll be linked in my in the the show notes, so it'll take you to the pattern. Um, it's Max the Knitter on Instagram. So you've probably lots of people have knit these, so you'll probably have seen. So I picked up. I haven't got a lot of DK in my stash, so oh, if I hold it there, that's sort of more of a true colour, really. Um, so uh you needed two skeins of dk like contrasting for the outside and then on the inside you used suri alpaca so it's like a double layered cowl 
So for the outside, I used um, Snuggly Stars yarns. Uh, the grey is Mount Fury, and this is the pink is a dust. It's called just called Dusty Pink, and it is a dusty pink. It's really not showing very well. Though. Sorry, the light is really bad today. Um, but it was on her DK Stellina, so it's got Stellina in it as well. So you can see it's it's um. You can see it's picking up the sparkle. And then for the inside, I used Demelza's Delights um, in her Kit Hill colourway. And Kit Hill is a a hill that's between us and... Is, actually, is it in Cornwall? Yeah, it is just, it's just over the border in Cornwall from, from me. Um, and it's got our like, television mast and that because it's quite tall. So... It's a beautiful, like, bright pinky purple with speckles. And then I also use that as the draw cord for the... Um, so you hold it double on the inside, and then you hold it eight together for the eye cord. So that was a bit... So it's really... It's so so snuggly it's really it was really cozy so yeah so i love it and it says to do 13 inches of body but i've only got because i've got like six chins i haven't got much neck so i thought if i do 13 inches it's just going to be like really bulky um so i did 10 repeats of the pattern and then started this the the top rib um i love it it's so cozy and you're also supposed to do 40 inches of i cord 50 inches of i cord and i did 40 because i didn't want massively long strings because i don't think i'm ever going to get to the point where i'm using the strings to tie it anyway I'll just I would probably tighten it and that would be that would be about it um yeah so I love it it's so snuggly it is as the title suggests it is really snuggly so it's actually too warm to have it on in the house because I've got I put the heating on oh air cut tomorrow I can't wait for it on the air cut um then the next two finished objects are both for Nigella. Um, I made myself the ale hat. I showed it in the last podcast. So using the same yarns, I knit him the ale 2.0. Um, so we were matchy, but not matchy-matchy, like, like creepy couples matchy. <laughs> not that we'll ever, probably ever wear the hat together at the same point time anyway. So I used John Arban... Um, textiles in this viola base um in nimbus cloud and this is english mustard it's coming out green but it's it is more of like a, a proper english mustard color and then this the other uh yarn is autumn eladrin by chromatic yarns um so and you hold it all double so it's all dk held double so it's quite here we go village idiot time Move the hat on. They never look right with glasses on, do they? I have to, I have to take my specs off. I can't see now. So it's quite a sort of snug um, beanie. I've got another one to knit because when the kids were down, one of them really liked it. And she liked the same colours, but she just wants cream here, not the variegated. So I need to order. No, it's payday. I need to order some more grey. I think I've got enough mustard, but I just need more grey. Um... So yeah, you hold DK double, so it does come out like nice thick. So that's that's going to be a good hat. And then you needed another work hat. So um, I knit him this one, which is again, uh, oh sorry, the Ale hat, Ale 2.0 and the Ale and this is all from, by Jody Brown, uh, who was one half of the grocery girls, Mrs. Brown's bags. And this, she did a, a sister's hat collection. Um, and this one is the Tracy hat. But it just goes to show that they can be unisex. 
Um, so this is going to be a work hat for Nigel um, and it's knit from Cascade 220 um, which is a really good sort of workhouse yarn you can chuck it in the washing machine um, and it's no bother and he didn't want a pom-pom on it he didn't want a pom-pom on the other one because you know boys don't have pom-poms apparently but pff, knickers to that that's what I say so I used, I can't remember what colours they were. Did I write them on my show notes? Uh, no, I didn't. They will be on my project page anyway. I'm sure this is charcoal. This is river rock, I think. Oh, I didn't use all, all Cascade. This is just a cream. And this one is left over from a shawl that I did. And it is Budgie by... Uh, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, instead of unbelievable, you put a wool with a bull. It's so it's unbelievable. So this is budgie. So and it's all just slip stitches. So it's no colour work. It's just slip stitches. Um, and it's come out really well. So he can have it. For, I have. He has got one for work, but he has only got one, and I didn't do it quite long enough, so it doesn't quite cover his ears. He's got a weird shaped head. He's got like a pointy head. So this is his new app for work. Oh, this is really attractive. Like I were one. Hello. So. Oh, oh, too much hair, too much hair. So I think that's that it for FOs. Yeah, that's it for FOs. So it's not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bade at all uh, right slap it apologise for that slapping that you can probably hear quite well on the microphone sorry about that but I want to drink it while it's hot um, whipses we've got a few whipses Whipsy whipsies, whipsies. Where should we start? We'll start with this one. This is in my canvas cube bag from Thimble and Threadmake with all my pin badges on it. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, so this is my canal rings shawl by again by Stephen West. Um, it's being knit in his West Wall yarn that I picked up when I was at EYF this year. Um, so it's got a twisted rib detail and these bits go up and now I've done the decreases so I'm just about to start increasing out to another one um, so you can see how it's coming out and then it dips down um, and then you've got these <laughs> Like half moon, so it is in Taja, but it's really easy in Taja. Um, so it has this twisted rib element, and then these like half moon, and then you've got all these different done in stock in it and reverse stock in it. A bit of fluff there. So I've got pale pink, and then like a rosy, dusty pink, and then this is more of a like dark purpley pink in real life and then you've got this is the mouse colourway I can't remember what these three are um well they're in my bag I can probably look and tell you can't I mm. thing that so the pale pink is it's on his west wall bicycle base so the pale one is powder the middle one is rose wither yeah rose wither rose wither r o s w i t h a ross wither and then the dark one is glue vine so yeah oh, that's actually quite good but yeah so it is like a mold wine color so it is 
it is deeper than what it's showing on the screen and again apologies for the bad lighting but <laughs> can't be helped unfortunately so that's coming along i'm about halfway through now i've done six of the colored sections and i've got six more to go but obviously it's growing outwards as well so uh, uh, so it is going to be so hopefully i'm not sure if i'm going to record again before christmas or after probably i'll try and fit one in before christmas so um as sort of like on the go travel knitting um i started a litmus cowl by, this is a free pattern by Amy Florence. So you start with a provisional cast on and then you do these sections. So I'm using the, um, my coloured sections are the Autumn Berries mini set by Mr B's Yarns. I've got two of these sets, um, there's six in total, as you can see from, so I've done one full set now. And then my middle colour is a, it's just, Oh, uh, John Arban Textiles. It's in like an oatmeal-y colour. Oh, I'll find the tag. I might... Oh, hang on. I don't know where it might be. Yeah, there we go. So it's his Knit by Numbers 4 ply and it is KBN 12. So it's like an oatmeal-y grey colour yeah that's pretty much right yeah so yeah so i'm just plugging away at that so that's my like i took it with me this weekend and that's where i got a majority of the knitting done on it um because it's quite easy you're just knitting in the round so it's quite easy to um knit on while you're chattering uh what else have we got so a couple of days ago i started another hat i've got loads of hats but i just i might give this one to my sister for Christmas so this again is a hat by Jodie Brown um, and this is the Harrington hat that she designed for uh, the Nomadic Knits magazine so it is available as a separate pattern on Ravelry um, my little hat chat stitch marker I was naughty and I ordered their Jingle Balls um, yarn set and it came with some stitch markers. So this one says hat chat. Uh, I don't know why I did it in that stupid voice, but I did. But it says hat chat for those of you who didn't understand my stupid voice. Um, so yeah, it's a, a cabled and then a twisted rib. But I like how the how she designed the rib. So it's got this twisted rib in it, but the cables also follow up through the the rib follows up through the cables which is really clever so i am just plugging away on that it's been actually been my work knitting for the last couple of days um so hopefully that shouldn't take me too long my sister did mention the other day that the hat she's got which is she just bought from a shop doesn't really fit her very well so um i might gift her that one for christmas i don't know yet it depends how much i like it by the time it's finished um look at this bag isn't this beautiful i got this bag at the stitch fest totness in stitch fest southwest in totness from bellica yarns i just loved the fabric it's beautiful and it's quite a sizable sizable bag so in here i have started an anders sweater if you watch the one where i showed the baby knits that i did um it was the sweater with it's got colour work like fir trees on the bottom um and i've started this for our great nephew josh um i knit a wee envelope for him when he was born and his mummy loves uh babies in knitwear hand knits so i thought i'd knit him one um but i might have to pull it back because i was knitting it the other night and the light wasn't brilliant and i've dropped a stitch so but i think i've dropped it on the raglan increase so i may rip it back to to the 
you do a what's called a vickle braid which is really clever here so I might rip it back to the braid um, and then restart it because I can put as only once I don't I don't know I might carry on and then I can always sew that stitch in later um, it doesn't look like it's gonna show really and it's a baby sweater anyway so I'm knitting this out of some Ella Ray Cash Merino sport yarn um, and it's a, like a navy really dark navy and it's the abyss colorway and then my contrast will be um, this which is the same yarn in the quartz colorway so it's Ella Ray Cash Merino sport and it's great it's a uh i really need to go for an eye test because st small print is now it is 55 percent merino 33 percent acrylic 12 percent cashmere and it's machine washable obviously not tumble dryer but i'll tell her that anyway uh I have no idea what all these symbols mean on washing instructions, but I'm sure it, I'm sure it's fine to go in the wash washing machine. So that's that for Josh. Uh, I'll show this. It's not grown massively since you saw it last, but now it's winter. I've pulled out some my blanket again. So this is a cozy memories blanket it's not massive um and i am using all uh this one is all Nora george yarns this square so i've done eight row eight squares along the bottom and i'm f i'm just starting on the fifth row of the eight um and i've got some obviously got a lot of scraps because i am a Nora george fangirl I'm not going to say the rest of that for those of you who are in the know. Um, so I've got lots of Nora George scraps. So I'm going to try and I've got another. This, The first three rows were her advent calendar from not last year, year before. And then I've got a calendar, an advent calendar that I haven't used from the year before that of hers as well. So I've got at least another 24 squares there. And I've obviously got lots of scraps. So what I was thinking was... Um, I probably, I probably have, but I probably won't have enough yarn to do an entire blanket from Nora George. So I was thinking I might do like an eight by eight and then put a black border around it and then start another eight by eight and do four lots of eight by eight with black borders around them and then sew them together. That's my plan. So it's going to take... 20 million years because you know to be fair it's taken me two years to get this far so <laughs> but hey but I've been trying to put whilst I'm working so I only work three days a week so I've been trying to do like a square a day I thought if I can do a square a day three you know three squares a week if I feel like it I can do another you know over a weekend I can do a square or whatever so um yeah it'll be that it'll it's just one of those sort of long term it'll sit there and um and it's in my bag that says billy the cat because i have got a cat called billy who you have seen on this very podcast he is over there snoozing his head off at the moment so i doubt we'll be making an appearance today so yeah that's my cozy memory so that again is just a you know every whipping trip i'll put a square on that and then these I started last year but I only did a few and then I got waylaid with other stuff but I've really got back into them um this is I don't know where I got this bag from I don't think it's got a tag on it um but it's Christmas cats it's really cute um and then like with a checked I got it off Etsy I'm sure I got it from Etsy so last year uh Christy who is yarn cafe creations um 
put out some uh it was an advent sock ornament mystery knit along so every day for the 24 days of advent you got a little sock ornament pattern which so and I, I i had every intention of knitting one every day but you know what that gets like with gift knitting and things like that but i'm not doing any gift knitting this year so uh i have i'm sure i've done 12 so this one has got bobbly bits on it look so every day was like a different pattern sock so that's like a little mini cable uh what's that that's got like garter ridges on it bumps this is this one's got none of them have been blocked or anything yet so this has just got like a little like cross over stitch um up here this one's got lace detail on it and these are i did i we had i had two yarn advent calendars last year i did the one the lay family yarn swap which i've done again this year uh with the lovely elizabeth in america who has sent me the most amazing parcel and then sophie imogen and sarah who are my best yarn buddies we do one between us um and we give eight minis to each of the other three um so we all end up with 24 so i will have two again this year so uh then i have this one which is i don't know what it's like ribbed but with garter uh and then this one's got a cable running all the way down the front and then this one's got color work on it I'm trying to do color work on a mini sock this one i ran out of patience with because it was fiddly but uh it's like a shell and then I just did garter for the rest of it. This one's got, it's supposed to be a chimney, but my contrast wasn't very good. So it's supposed to be like brickwork on that one. And then this one, again, is cables, little mini cables. So what I'm going to do with them is once I have 24, I might keep going with other little scraps. And I'm going to hang them, I'm going to make a garland of them and hang them in my sewing area um so that was last year's and christy is again doing it this year but it's going to be a mixture it's not just going to be socks it's going to be socks little jumpers um mittens you know lots of little um ornaments so it's another ornament knit along and again you'll get one pattern every day for the 24 days so I'm looking forward to that. That should be really interesting. Is that it? What's it? Oh, my desk is empty. So, um, something else that I have worked on is RWI um, this year. It's do we did one last, we did it last year as well. It's our local, the church in the village where we have RWI, um, which is the next village up from where i live i live in peter tavy and we have wi in mary tavy um and that's named after the churches we've got saint peter's in peter tavy and saint mary's in mary tavy um and it's on the river tavy so there you get the so there you go some local knowledge for you um so mary tavy church are having a christmas tree festival and one of the campaigns of the WI this year was reducing our plastic use. So we came up with the idea of, or one of my very clever ladies at WI came up with the idea of um, making Christmas decorations from single use plastic to get the, you know, reduce reuse um, idea across on the Christmas tree. So I went to everybody's favorite friend, Pinterest, and to see what they could come up with and i made some decorations so our wi is called tor and tavy wi so i just made this this is plastic milk bottle tops and a coke bottle that did say please recycle me till i super glued myself to it and it pulled off after writing i shouldn't be alone with super glue so i just i 
just glued them onto a bit of card and this is a Tipex pen that I've just decorated the bottle tops with. Um, so that's that one and then I used a empty lemonade bottle and I cut strips and I made some icicles so you get a strip of plastic you hold it over a tea light so that it stops so it gets a bit flexible um, so you know if you want to do it with children it's probably it would you need you would need to help them if they're young children um, so you hold it over a tea light till it starts to sort of melt get a bit melty and then you just twist them and then I just put a hole in the end and put them on some ribbon I've dropped one on the floor <laughs> the floor's a long way down so that's my icicles and then using you know the bumpy bits on the bottom of a of a bottle Ta -da! so I cut the bottom off I painted the inside with white acrylic just white acrylic paint and then I had some of those you know those metallic marker pen things that I picked up in Lidl's like ages ago thought well they'll be useful one day you know what us crafters are like and I just drew some snowflake patterns on those and then these are off the bottom of some squash um, so they're like little square ones but they've got the bumpy bits on them so I did the same with those as well so they will go to WI this evening because we have a little competition going on as well so they'll, they'll be off to WI tonight um, yeah and away we go so that's it that's all I've got to show that's all I've got to say so um, like I say for those of you who are in the US I hope you have have had a lovely thanksgiving um and not eating too much turkey uh for those of you who are at flock I'm, i will see you there um and for the rest of you i hope you're all well take care and i'll see you next time i will try and get one in before christmas I promise okay happy knitting bye